Hello and welcome to Health Reform Watch, a collaboration between Reuters and the Forum at the Harvard School of Public Health. I'm your host, David Morgan, healthcare policy correspondent for Reuters in Washington. And with me today is Professor Robert Blenden of the Harvard School of Public Health. Professor Blenden is a leading expert on healthcare policy, politics, and public opinion. And he's here to talk to us about the political implications of two U.S. appellate court rulings that have just come down and which could determine the fate of the Affordable Care Act. Hello, Professor. Welcome back to Health Reform Watch. David, pleasure to join you again. As you know, a funny thing just happened in the annals of Obamacare's legal battles. A U.S. appellate court, which is to say a three-judge panel with the U.S. appeals court in the District of Columbia, ruled that uh, the administration should not be able to offer federal subsidies to low to moderate income people who purchase private insurance through the federal marketplace for health insurance that was set up under Obamacare. Now this ruling, if it stands, could have a devastating effect on the Affordable Care Act because an estimated five million people could be affected. Hours after that ruling, another U.S. appellate court, this one in Virginia, came out with a ruling which upheld the very same provision. And so now it seems that this battle could very well be headed for another showdown before the U.S. Supreme Court, possibly as late as 2016. In the meantime, there's a congressional midterm election campaign to wage this year. And it would help us very much, Professor, if you could tell us whether this issue provides either side, either party, an advantage in the campaign. So uh, first, David, uh, what are Americans likely to take away uh, from the news coverage? Uh, this is a very complex issue. So they're just going to take away that some decision was made that creates uncertainty about where the Affordable Care Act's going to go. Mm. And the uncertainty sort of helps one political party versus another. So in the short term, I think it's likely to help uh, Republicans running for the Senate or the House uh, in uh, the upcoming election a few months from now. And why it is, is that the Speaker of the House and soon to be uh, committees of the House are going to vote for a uh, lawsuit against the administration over having a presidential overreach over the Affordable Care Act. Uh, they're going to argue that uh, they have gone way beyond the law. And this one of the two decisions, the district uh, decision uh, in Washington, D.C., makes that case that uh, they've required uh, uh, paying uh, billions of dollars over time uh, for funds that were not appropriately appropriated in the law. Uh, so uh, the Republicans running against the Senate will say this is a poorly designed law. Mm -hmm. uh, the president way overreached. The case involves the Internal Revenue Service and uh, polls show we're just at an all time low of trust in the Internal Revenue Service was somehow involved. So in the short term, it, it's likely to make the out party challenging the administration on this law. Uh, somewhat stronger in, in in the campaign. Sorry, is it likely to change the minds of any voters? Uh, no. What's going to change uh, a bit is that the administration and the president says all the time that the debate is over. Uh, this is settled law. Why should we continue to be arguing in this election about the future of the Affordable Care Act? For people who might have wondered, should they vote on this issue? Should it be important to them because it's already settled? It sends a signal to them it may not be settled, mm -hmm. that this still debate will, will go on. That, that's all it's going to, to do. But this uh, election in many states is going to be very close. So if it affects just a small number of voters, at the end of the day, it could have a significant impact on who controls the future U.S. Congress. Well, Obamacare as a campaign issue seems to have gone a bit quiet over the course of the summer. Do you think that this could revitalize the issue for Republicans? Will we hear more about it now? Will there be more activity? 
Uh, so there will be more activity. There is a real separation uh, between uh, people who study politics in the states and people who study uh, what's going on in Washington. In many states, uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is still politically controversial. And Republican candidates are running and running ads and talking about how they're going to repeal it and limit. Uh, when I go back to Washington, people think we're moving on. It's not very controversial. The co mm -hmm. Congress isn't talking about it a lot. But anybody covering races in Colorado uh, or Kentucky or West Virginia or Louisiana uh, finds that this issue is still quite controversial. And I think in the key competitive states, uh, this is going to be one of the important issues about who will control the Congress. Uh, what the, the dual rulings do is just create uncertainty about the future. And that's going to worry people and uncertainty about the future, about what's going to happen to a bill, just tends to, at least in the short term, uh, help the party challenging. So if I'm a, just a busy person, I'm hearing something could be decided as a result of these two decisions in the Supreme Court that could dramatically change this bill. And so suddenly, in my mind, it's not settled. Something could happen. So that, that I think, in the short term, in the long term, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about, I think that these decisions, particularly if the Supreme Court uh, acts to uh, say that it can't, the law can't continue as it currently is, will actually be helpful for Democrats in the 2016 election. Mm. Well, actually, I was just going to ask about the long term because the uh, legal arguments are unlikely to be settled for months, if not uh, much longer than that. In fact, some people think that if it does go to the Supreme Court, a uh, final ruling could very well drag on into the 2016 presidential campaign. Well, what does that uh, mean, f politically speaking? I mean, how does the calculus change as we go through the November midterm elections and get into the next Congress and then the presidential campaign? Uh, uh, two issues are, and uh, people are not focusing on it in the news coverage at the moment, is that uh, if the Supreme Court says that uh, federal exchanges cannot provide subsidies to people, which are very critical to their buying insurance, mm. uh, if a state changes from a federal exchange to a state-run exchange, which they can do by a vote of the legislature and the governor, they can continue subsidies. So what you're going to find is, uh, if the uh, Supreme Court were to make that decision, you'll find Democrats running for uh, the governor's uh, races in the states that have federal exchanges, arguing that their state should switch to a state exchange so people can keep the subsidies. Mm -hmm. You'll find Democrats and legislators, uh, legislators saying, oh no, we want to vote to be sure our state uh, continues in Kentucky or New Hampshire. And what we'll do is what Connecticut does. We'll run our own exchange and we'll keep getting subsidies. And so this will really become a Democratic issue. Uh, likewise, the Democratic presidential candidate is very likely to say, if I am elected, let's fix the bill so you can have any type of exchange you want and people still receive subsidies to buy insurance. And, uh, but this is going to be a popular issue. And I think uh, people are going to miss why it's going to be popular on the Democratic side. When this was originally discussed, uh, this didn't involve human lives, people actually getting insurance and care. This was just an argument about whether a state should have a state agency or a federal agency running this program. Many governors were just leery of the federal government. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, now we have millions of people who would lose their subsidized coverage. So it's going to be very emotionally appealing for anybody running to say, let's change our law in our state, uh, Kentucky or Arkansas, uh, again, New Hampshire, and have a state exchange, and we're going to protect millions of people's coverage. So it's going to be a very powerful issue if it plays out uh, for this, and Republicans will be in the reverse position. Uh, that is, it's not let's get rid of the law. It is that they're going to say let's not extend coverage to people who've been covered for years uh, because of the Supreme Court decision. And I think there'll be 
uh, in a more difficult position in 2016 with that argument, where they'll be in a much better position three months from now, uh, dealing with the uh, uncertainty created by this case. Well, as always, these are fascinating things to watch unfold, and thank you very much for putting us in the picture. Thank you. Thanks also to viewers who have joined us for this edition of Health Reform Watch. I'm David Morgan. See you next time.